Did you know that nine out of 10 startups fail? I was a product owner for an email marketing company called Equibus, and we built a technically sound product with several bells and features. In a year, the market conditions changed. A lot of competitors emerged, and we realized that we needed to really focus on our marketing and sales. Eventually, it was a huge failure and it bombed and we had to shut down the company. Take the example of any TV remote control. Every one of the pre-programmed buttons costs money and time to gather requirements. Engineer, manufacture, test, and maintain. Yet the vast majority of buttons add little value for most of the customers. The remote control is a great technology marvel. Yet the minimalistic Apple remote that focuses on the on-off button and the volume control is much more valuable. There is a Silicon Valley saying, build it and they will come. But why should they come? What's the value? Regardless of what business you're in or what product you're working on, you're always competing with others. And if you want to dominate the market and outperform 99% of your competitors, then the book called The Blue Ocean Strategy by W. Chan Kim and Rene Mauberg teaches us how to leave our competition way behind by offering insane value at low cost. Hi, my name is Anil Jai Singh. I'm a certified Scrum trainer with Scrum Alliance, chief product manager for Concepts and Beyond, and an adjunct faculty with NYU's program of project management. My main work was being a trainer, but little that I realized that my main job is of a product manager, a product owner for my training and coaching programs within Concepts and Beyond. So 20% of my work creating and packaging great training and great coaching programs but 80% is marketing and sales. How do we make a product successful and turn it into a thriving business? If you noticed, products are becoming more and more similar to each other. For example, people used to be very loyal to brands like Tide for laundry detergent or Colgate for toothpaste. But now, if some other brand is on sale, they might switch to that. Instead, it's getting harder and harder to stand out from the crowd. A study was conducted to see the impact of creating Blue Ocean versus competing in red ones. The study analyzed 108 companies and their business launches. Out of the 108 companies studied in the research, 86 of them were simply improving their existing product within the existing market space. These launches brought 39% of total profits. The remaining 14% of the companies focused on creating a Blue Ocean. They came up with new and innovative products the market had never seen before. These companies generated an impressive 61% of total profits. This data clearly shows that creating a blue ocean can lead to better profits and growth. Let's take a look at a few examples. IPL cricket. Cricket is the oldest and most popular sport. It was mostly played by national teams against each other. Interest in cricket was waning, even though there were three formats. First class test match for five days, one day internationals for about seven to eight hours, and Players had to have a lot of perseverance to get into the national team. Big discrepancy between international and domestic cricket. If domestic cricket did not innovate, they would lose a lot of fans and leave many players dejected. The Indian Premier League was invented in 2008, looking across sports league, inviting players across national boundaries, and created 10 teams. Instead of trying to compete in the domestic market with churning out or making differences to their format, they looked across their industry to see what they can adopt from the entertainment industry. They added celebrities from the Indian film industry to become owners, as well as perform during the game to draw crowds. The Indian Premier League of Cricket is the highest revenue grocer only next to the NFL. Webex. Webex grew rapidly under the Cisco umbrella. Yuan's hard work earned him numerous promotions before landing him the role of Corporate Vice President of Engineering. During this period, Yuan oversaw immense growth of the WebEx product. He grew the product's engineering team from a handful of developers to a team of more than 800 engineers. Annual revenue expanded to upwards of 800 million. WebEx may have been innovative in its early days, but after a decade, the product fell stagnant and customers felt frustrated. Yuan discovered that most of the customer pain points were new problems. Here is where Yuan saw an opportunity. He quit WebEx and started Zoom with an initial investment of $250,000. The early Zoom product was impressive, initially available as a web app and for iOS. Zoom allowed up to 15 concurrent meeting attendees. It was optimized to run well even on a weak or unstable wireless connection. Zoom's audio and video quality were both very high. At that time, many web conferencing companies such as Video were focused on hardware solutions for desktop conferencing. Better hardware meant better image and audio quality. This was seen as especially important. 
The education sector was also driving demand for high quality video conferencing solutions. And telemedicine was another one that was pushing for more and more video conferencing. The conferencing solutions such as synchronous models became increasingly popular, but mobile remained a critical vulnerability for many web conferencing companies, a weakness Zoom quickly capitalized on. What set Zoom apart from the competition wasn't just the clarity of the video, it was how well Zoom worked on mobile. A company called Impossible Food has over the last six years done something not quite impossible, but definitely unlikely. Engineering a plant-based burger that smells, tastes, looks, and even feels like ground beef. There are other veggie burgers on the market, of course, but Impossible Foods want to sell consumers a real meat feel and taste. What they landed on is a surprising mix. Ingredients include wheat protein to give the burger the firmness and chew, and potato protein, which allows the burger to hold water and transition from a softer state to a more solid state during cooking. For fat, Impossible Food uses coconut with the flavor sucked out. And of course, you need the lemoglobin, which drives home the flavor of meat. Technicians take genes that code for the soy lemoglobin protein and insert them to a species of yeast called Feature pastoresis. Then they feed the modified yeast sugar and minerals, prompting it to grow and replicate and manufacture heme with a fraction of the footprint of field-grown soy. With this process, Impossible Food claims it produces a fake burger that uses a 20th of the land required for feeding and raising livestock and uses a quarter of the water, while producing an eighth of the greenhouse gases. The cornerstone of the Blue Ocean strategy is something called value innovation, which basically means providing higher value to your customer at a lower cost. Doesn't higher value mean higher cost? The answer is no. Companies first analyze the market by using a blue ocean tool called Strategy Canvas. The Strategy Canvas is a simple framework that helps you understand two important things about the market. What your competition is offering to the market and what value customers are getting for their money. The information about the competition and the offerings is captured in the horizontal axis and the information about the value the customer receives is captured on the vertical axis. For example, in the case of a price, a higher score indicates a higher value to the customer. If I go back to the IPL example, cricket in India, ticket pricing was dropping. Players were focused playing at their national level. High competition made it hard for most players to play any international games. Audience interest was dropping. Cricket organizations around the world had the same conventional strategy which to offer a lower price and eventually lower quality. Across all factors, after analyzing the market, IPL Cricket in India used the second and the most important Blue Ocean tool called the Four Actions Framework that poses four key questions to develop a Blue Ocean strategy. Eliminate, reduce, raise, and create. The purpose of the first two questions is to reduce cost. So how did IPL Cricket apply the Four Actions Framework to create a Blue Ocean strategy? They eliminated national boundaries and testing players' perseverance in waiting to get a chance. They invited players from all over the world to play in the IPL. And that's how they eliminated national boundaries. They dramatically reduced the spectators' time invested. By starting the IPL, they raised the players' technique and skills. The glamour of players had increased. The pace of the match had increased. They created new entertainment. They saw a huge increase in fan base. The players' technique and skills have increased. The glamour of the players is huge and pace of the match is at fever pitch. The entertainment level is extremely high. The Blue Ocean strategy is a revolutionary concept. It's about forging a fresh market, distancing yourself from the existing competition, essentially rendering them irrelevant. So what are some practical ways to spot these elusive Blue Ocean strategies? Here are six helpful ideas. Firstly, look across alternative industries. Observe other enterprises within your sector. Study their success. Learn from their mistakes to innovate you need to not merely replicate. Standout example of this strategy is Stitch Fix. This from a budding startup in 2011 to a whopping 3.6 billion powerhouse. How? They took the retail experience and gave it a technological twist. Katrina Lake, the youngest female CEO to lead a US IPO, noticed stagnation in retail. Traditional stores played it safe, focusing on variety and sensory experiences while online retailers catered to a demand for cheaper products and speedy delivery. Katrina saw an opportunity. She merged technology and human touch, creating Stitch Fix, a new hybrid retailer by combining the stylistic flair of professionals with the power of AI. She revolutionized retail and breathed new life into a stagnant industry, all while championing women in the workplace. 
her success story is an inspiration to all in the field. Part two is to look across strategic groups within your industry. A great example is NetJets, a pioneer in the airline industry. Imagine the dilemma faced by business travelers. The choice between flying commercial for cost effectiveness or owning a private jet for commercial airlines are wallet friendly, but they lack the speed and comfort of private travel. Owning a jet on the other hand offers a swift transition from car to takeoff, ensuring travelers arrive at their destination. NetJets masterfully bridged this gap. They crafted a solution that marries the affordability of commercial flights with the luxury of private jet. The strategic move created an entirely new market segment offering the best of both worlds while discarding the less appealing aspect of each option. The outcome, a groundbreaking service providing the ease of a private jet at a price comparable to a commercial travel. This innovation catapulted NetJets into a multi-billion dollar entity, firmly establishing them as industry leaders, including everything from pre-flight to post-flight interactions. NetJets didn't just enter a market, they created a blue ocean by reimagining the entire journey of their customer. Path number three is to redefine the industry buyer group. Let's delve into the visionary journey of Novo Nordisk, a Danish company that revolutionized the insulin industry. Industry fixated on doctors as the primary influencers in the purchasing decisions of insulin. However, Novo Nordisk saw beyond this conventional wisdom. They recognized a blue ocean opportunity by refocusing their industry's attention from doctors to the patients themselves. Novo Nordisk understood that empowering patients was key. They introduced an insulin delivery system that allowed patients to self-administer insulin with ease and discretion. This system was a game changer, replacing the cumbersome and often syringes and needles with a user-friendly insulin pen. This pen could be carried anywhere, offering patients the freedom to manage their diabetes. The transformational story of Novo Nordisk is a testament to the power of understanding and responding to customer needs. It highlights the importance of considering the entire user experience, customer journey, or product journey in product management. By shifting the focus to patient empowerment, Novo Nordisk didn't just create a product, they crafted a new narrative in diabetes management. Part number four is to look across complementary products and services. Actifry already had a household name in Europe for its electric French fryer makers and was navigating a challenging market, shrinking by 10% annually. Electric cooking unit sector was fierce with companies vying for dominance through aggressive price cuts. However, Actifry's team chose a different path. They identified two widely held beliefs that had gone unquestioned. First, that making a French fries must involve frying. Second, that frying requires copious amounts of oil. Traditional flyers guzzle up to 2.5 liters of oil. Post frying, disposing of this hot oil becomes a hassle, not to mention the health concerns with high fat content. They shifted the focus from creating not just another fryer to inventing a way to produce delicious, healthy French fries without traditional frying. Active Fry used a revolutionary French fry maker that used air fry. This innovation uses merely a tablespoon of oil to cook two pounds of fries, slashing calorie content by around 40% and fat by a whopping 80% compared to standard servings. Launched in 2016, this appliance is not only a breeze to clean, but also marked as a turning point for Active Fry. The result, a blockbuster success, generating sales of over 1 billion euros globally. Actifry didn't just survive in a shrinking market, it expanded it by nearly 40%, drawing in customers who had never before considered electric cookware. Actifry's story is more than a business triumph. It's a testament to potential of creative thinking in product management. Part number five is to rethink the functional and emotional orientation of its industry. Maybe you face an intensely competitive industry with no room to stand apart, but does that mean there's no room to break away from the competition and create new market space? Think again. One of the case studies is SoulCycle, a company that reinvented fitness and indoor cycling. SoulCycle is a 45-minute full-body workout led by inspirational instructors with upbeat music. It takes place in an intimate setting that shifts from candlelight during the warm-up to posting fluorescent lights as the music and lighting takes up before returning to the candlelight for the cool-down and life motivation session. SoulCycle created an offering that flips the orientation of the fitness industry from functional to emotional. In doing so, SoulCycle opened up a new market space so compelling that even in an overcrowded market, it's almost a cult with customers. Fitness is a multi-billion dollar industry in the US. There are luxury high-end gyms, mid-tier sports clubs, and gyms in every town and city. You arrive, you work out, sweat a lot, get stronger, and go home. We don't promise you it's fun. No surprise the founders of SoulCycle changed their aim 
to create an experience that people actually look forward to because it's fun, joyful, and as exciting as going to the latest school club. The instructors were hired not just because of their athletic ability, but music motivation and bike dancing moves they bring to the class. Number six is to participate in sharing trends over time. Netflix began as an online subscription-based DVD rental mailing service in the US. For a monthly subscription fee, subscribers could rent as many DVDs as they wanted and keep them for as long as they like. There are no due dates and no late fees, and the DVDs were delivered directly to your home. Netflix sales and growth took off and broke away from the competition, but the world did not stand still. The internet was taking off, broadband was becoming the norm, and free sources of entertainment online were on track to grow without any signs of slowing down. So when the company made the decision to start their streaming service that we know today, for a low monthly fee, customers can watch as much as they want at any time of the day or night without any commercials from virtually any internet device. The first streaming service offered a wide selection of movies, documentaries, films, and show clear, simple navigation and the low monthly price. Before long, Netflix opened a blue ocean. So how can you use the strategy canvas, the fourth path framework, and the six transformational methods to take your product from a dream to a reality? I like to share with you product worksheets that are going to help you scan the QR code to download it. I'll also share a link in the description below. I want to also share with you how we transformed into a thriving training and coaching business. We have a class for a trainer and coach accelerator program that not just teaches you how to package your training and coaching, but also how to sell it. I'm going to share a description in the link below. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more videos like this. See you next time.